All right, the time has come. Welcome back from lunch. My name is Mitch Cohen. Welcome to PDF Kit Basics. Is my audio reasonably decent back there for those in the back? Awesome, thank you. All right, so here's the deal. You've been hired by a rock band to write their app. The make-believe, very make-believe rock band is mentioned in the memory leakers, known as the second greatest Apple developer band in rock and roll. Anybody tell me the greatest rock and roll band in the Apple, Apple developer community? Look at my shirt, anybody? There we go, you got it. All right, so the big feature of this app that you've got to write is ticket sales, because Mission Memory Leakers want to sell tickets to their shows. And the way this is going to work, similar to, uh, to the way you've seen a uh, lot of web services work, is you uh, buy your thing and it sends you a PDF, except it's all going to be done in the app, because it's magic. Your great graphic designer sends you a PDF that looks like this. It's not a great graphic designer. Uh, and he, he says, all right, here's the template that everyone's going to get. And you need to throw in the ticket holder's name into this PDF. You need to have a unique web link down at the bottom right because they want to track it. Put it close there because they're tracking kind of marketing people. And you want a unique QR code so you can check yourself into the venue when the show's on. So let's get to work. All right, a little bit about PDFs. I'm sure everyone here is familiar with PDFs in general. Um, so format started in the 1990s by Adobe. It's since gone open source. Uh, started as a way of representing the printed page in an electronic form, uh, as a way of saying, okay, instead of printing something, you can just share it around as a file. Over time, a lot of features have been added to just make it more useful um, on electronic devices, um, such as buttons and forms and things like that. We're going to be doing some of that in the session today. Um, the current version spec is 971 freaking pages. Uh, it's not pretty. Uh, PDF is sort of a superset of PostScript, which was created by Adobe about 20 years prior to PDF. So in a way, and, and PostScript is a nightmare to deal with. I've had to do that. So in a way, PDF is like a super nightmare. But luckily, PDF Kit makes it pretty easy to deal with most of the features. So a little bit about PDFs, again, as a whole. Um, the origin for PDF, PDF layout is the lower left. If you're a Mac developer, great, you already know how to deal with that. If you're an iOS developer, it's usually in the upper left, um, so you've got to think yourself upside down a little bit. And there are some, some tools built in that help you uh, jump back and forth. PDF files can have text, they can have vector images, bitmap images, and annotations, which is how we're going to be spending a little bit of our time today. Annotations are things that are added to the page that do something or are something. Um, it can be user editable text, a form, uh, a text, and images can have actions on them. PDF Kit was created by Apple, originally introduced in iOS 9, um, but it kind of sucked in iOS 9. In 11, they made it a lot better. They added all the features about adding annotations and making edits and things like that. So in my head, it's an iOS 11 and up feature. Uh, it's on iOS and Mac OS, not on watchOS or tvOS. It's made up of a number of classes, the main classes, our PDF view, which is a UIB subclass, um, and that's for displaying PDF. PDF documents are, um, are the documents you're going to throw at that um, PDF view. PDF pages are individual pages of, um, of the PDF document, or really, you know, that's displayed within the PDF view. One thing about PDFs is that um, PDF pages can be of different sizes within the same document. So it's a little bit different than like a you know, Word file or something like that that a lot of people deal with. Um, PDF annotation is the annotation I talked about before, the thing that goes on the page that does something. And PDF annotations can have PDF actions assigned to them that then do the thing that you want it to do. You tap on it and it goes to a web page um, or goes to another particular page or location in the PDF file. All right. So PDF document is... Um, sort of the, the parent of the data organization of, um, in PDF Kit. Um, dealing with it's very, very easy. You just grab a URL off the disk, or from NS data, or from, from absolutely nothing at all, and you instantiate it here, in this case, um, and it's with a, with a URL to a file on the disk. Smiling for the photographer here. Um, and, uh, and then PDF view is what you deal with with the on-screen representation. It's 
pretty much just like dealing with the UI view, but it's got some extra PDF magic built in. You init it with a frame like you do any other UI view, except you have to throw a document data before you do anything with it. This is the PDF document that you picked up in the prior slide. Auto scales equal true is something that I suggest using. You're probably going to want to use in most views where you're just looking at a single page at a time because it helps keep the margins and sizing in pretty good shape. I wish that was the default. It's not, but it's easy to, uh, to throw that in. There are a few ways of displaying PDF views. Um, the two that you're probably familiar with from looking at the preview application on the Mac is single page and single page continuous. Single page says, I'm looking at exactly one page, no more, no less at a time. Uh, and you need to provide some ability for the user to manipulate and navigate through the PDF document if you have multiple pages. Um, single page continuous is the same thing, except it's scrolling up and down or left and right. You can do either one for a single page, except it's continuous. And what happens in that case is you have more than one pages on the screen at a time. So when the user is, say, tapping on something and you want to do something in the PDF file, you have to figure out, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, to figure out what page are they actually tapping on there. And then you can perform the action on the page. From the print world, there's the, the concept of two upper facing pages where you have a left and right page, um, and it can deal with that too, uh, as well as uh, the continuous version of that. All right, if there's one thing that I love everyone to leave here never doing again, it's instantiating a web view to display a PDF. It's easy, and it was the way to do it for a long, long time. But you're basically, you're, you're spinning up Safari inside your app just to display a PDF, which is like a tiny bit of what WebKit or God forbid UI WebView can do. Um, so don't do this anymore, because you've got WebKit. And this is how to do the same thing, much low, less memory footprint. And you've already learned how to do this with the first few slides here. You just grab the URL of the file, throw it into a PDF document, throw the PDF document into a PDF view, set auto scales, throw it on the screen. Boom, and you're done. So I could stop there. Oh wait, there's more. So when dealing with PDF files in PDF kit, in PDFs in general, they operate on a principle of 72 pixels per inch. Um, which goes back to early Macs, which were 72 DPI on the screen, and the print publishing world which still uses that as a measuring concept. Now, this isn't the quality of the item. PDF files can be very, very high resolution, containing vectors and vector-oriented text and things like that. Um, but as far as measurement and how you locate where on the screen something is going, where within the file something is going, it's all 72 DPI. No matter how you're displaying it, if you're displaying it as a tiny thumbnail, if you're displaying it gigantic on, um, you know, 30 inch screen, something like that. It's always 72 DPI. And if it's a letter size PDF, which is the most common in the U.S. to use, it's always going to be 612 by 792 points. Again, no matter how you're displaying it. Um, if you are dealing with a file that uh, the user may have arbitrarily downloaded from the web or created and you don't know the size, you can go ahead and query the size by going ahead and looking for a page. And again, the individual pages can be of different sizes within the same document. So you go ahead and you say, um, get this display box, which is this concept of the displayable area of a PDF, excluding um, some padding that goes around the sides for display purposes. Um, and in this case, you get the first page by saying, hey, give me the document of the view and give me the page zero, the first one. And they can get the balance of it. And that, again, for a letter size document, no matter how you're dealing with it, it's always going to be 612 by 792. And of course, it's 612 across and 792 up from the bottom. So um, PDF annotations is where things start to get interesting. And this is where we're going to start to complete our little project for the rock band. PDF annotations are anything that you add to the PDF file that's not baked into the raw PDF content. Uh, so in this case, we're going to add our text annotation for the ticket buyer's name. And it's a lot like adding any UI view or, or label. Uh, so you go ahead and you create a frame for it. Three, this is, one's going to be 320 off from the left and 600 up from the bottom. And it's going to be 200 wide and 80 high of points. And you initialize the PDF annotation with, you can give it a number of types. Free text is sort of just text. 
uh, and that's that one. There are a lot of other, I don't know, 15 or 20 different annotation types, circles and different shapes and different things that, that do different things. Uh, you can give it some special properties that aren't applicable to free text. You give it the contents, which in this case is text, a string, and you give it a font color, and you give it the font, and what they call the annotation color, you would normally think of as the background color, but here it's just called the color, because it could be a rectangle that has a color. Um, and that's what they call it. And you figure out what page you're going to put it on, and you tell the page, hey, add, an an add this annotation to you. And boom, you're done. You've done the, the name. Now, the unique link down at the bottom of the ticket is the same thing with a little bit more magic. So this is where you get into the PDF actions. So there are a few types of PDF actions. This one's called PDF action URL, which you can guess when you tap on it or click on it, it opens a URL. And it's really easy to use. You just initialize a URL, and you throw it at PDF action URL, and then you've got a PDF action. And then you tell the annotation that you've just created to go ahead and add this action as the action on the URL. There's exactly zero or one if you don't add anything, actions per annotation. Some of the other actions you can do is there's a PDF action named where you can put in buttons within your PDF to navigate forward and backward within the PDF. And there's another one called action go to, PDF action go to, that will create a button that could go to a any specific page that you code in and even a particular zoom level on that page. Uh, and there are a couple others for even opening up PDFs from remote servers and things like that. And all those get baked into the PDF. So, so once you've got the PDF, anybody opening that PDF in whatever PDF viewer they've got, the, those will work. You can also create custom objects by adding annotations and listening for when a, a PDF annotation gets tapped on. And then in your code, you can then do something. But these things are built into the PDF with its own knowledge. So the last thing we need to add is our, um, our QR code. Now this is a little bit harder to deal with because um, uh, the PDF annotations don't have a built-in image type. So the first thing is, you're lucky you went to the talk by Sam Davies yesterday on core image and you saw how to create um, core image filters. And one of the core image filters, really a generator that's available, is a QR code. That's not up on the screen because that's kind of irrelevant, but it is in the sample code. If anyone's curious, I can do that. And all that code does is it takes in some text, it generates a QR code and spits back a UI image. But the rest of this you can do with any UI image you want to drop onto the page. So, um, so what this is doing here is it's taking an annotation. There's a custom annotation subclass that I'm creating here called image annotation. And uh, it's doing something that's kind of like draw rect, but it's something that's provided by PDF kit. So you're just taking this image and drawing it inside the CG context of the annotation itself. And then it spits back a PDF annotation that then you can do whatever you want with in your PDF file. That's a regular annotation, so we can have actions associated with it and do any of the other magic stuff that annotations can do. So um, mentioned PDF pages before. There are a few different things you can do with pages, and some, you certainly need to if you are dealing with a multi-page document. Um, you can get a reference to a page. You can see what is the current page that's on there. You know, if you've got a scrollable view and you want to know what page the user is currently on. If the user has, for example, tapped on the screen somewhere, and you want to figure out, okay, what part of the, what page did they actually click on or tap on? or a reference to a CG point, so it'll spit that back. Again, mostly useful in continuous scrolling scenarios. Um, you can create a page from a UI image. So if you're generating UI images programmatically or pulling something down from the web, and you just say, I just want a page of this. You can just instantiate it, and boom, you've got a page that looks just like the image, and then you can add it into the PDF document. Um, and programmatically, you can go to a particular page there's also programmatic ways of saying just go next, go previous, as well as querying of can I go next, can I go previous. A 
Finding annotations isn't something we need to do here, but I've used this in a couple of applications. And this is useful if you want to find out um, if the user taps on a PDF page, are they tapping on an annotation or are they uh, tapping on somewhere else? And the somewhere else you might want to do an action, like for example, in the application I worked on, if the user was tapping on a text field, I wanted to have the user edit that text field. If the user was tapping somewhere else, I actually wanted to draw a freehand on that PDF. Um, so that was very, very useful. Something to keep in mind is that PDF annotations are always rectangles in the, the organization of them, even if they don't look like it. Because you can have Bezier curves and circles and things like that. What ends up happening if you have large annotations on the page, they overlap each other. And it, this is only going to give you back the topmost annotation. And you're not going to know about the annotations under that. You need to do some crazy work to figure those out. Last thing you want to do with our ticket, you want to save it and then do something with it. So you can simply just PDF document right to, right to path, dumps it out to disk, or you can get a data representation version of it if you're going to send it up to a web service. You can also get a UI image of the page, sort of the, the reverse of creating a page from a UI image. Um, and that's very easy to do. You need to do that display box thing where you say, okay, this is the region I want, just the printed page. Uh, you can also, um, if you're going to be doing more custom drawing, you can dump the page out to a CG context and do more drawing that way. And then magic, you've got your ticket. You've got the annotation in the top left with the ticket holder's name. Down towards the bottom, you've got a unique link. And if you click, click or tap on that link, it'll give you the URL that I've fed out, which was a domain name followed by the user's name, really exciting, and the QR code of the person's name. In that case, we have about a minute and a half left. So I'm going to very quickly demo this very, very fancy application. So I'm displaying the PDF first that I got from the designer in the PDF view, and I've got a little field here, and I'm just going to say, oh sure, I'll give it to you. And I say, buy, skip all the credit card stuff, and boom, it now has added all those annotations in, and it has saved it out to a file, and you know, I could send it or do something with it. Look at that, my PDF talk is now. And there's my PDF. Um, Actually, this isn't, this isn't going to work. It's going to try to load, but I've got internet turned off on here. But there's our magic, and if anyone wants to stick their camera up to the QR code, you'll see it's a real QR code. Um, I don't think there's time for any questions. Maybe there's one minute, if anyone has any questions. All right, cool. I'm around for the whole week. I'm on Slack. Um, all this stuff is going to be posted. Hold on, I'm not going to tell you where. Right there on my GitHub page, the talk and the sample code's already there. Um, I'll probably clean up a couple more things and make a couple other commits to it, but grab it any time, and I'll post this in the Slack channel. Um, anybody have any questions, track me down. Thank you very much.